Greetings from High Conflict Institute. I'm Bill Eddy, co-founder and chief innovation officer. And this is my second Monday message with the uh, shutdown, the stay at home around the world. And so we promise to give you a couple tips uh, the beginning of each week to help get through these times. Also, if you're dealing with high conflict people or working with a client who's dealing with a high conflict person, these tips could be useful to you too. So today's tip is really going to be about choices. And choices give people a sense of power, sense of participation, sense of respect. And what we want to do is talk about how you can help other people and influence the kind of response you get from them by turning things into a choice. So last week, I talked about empathy, attention, and respect, and encouraging statements, how we can calm ourselves and calm others by giving them a, a, a statement that shows empathy, attention, and respect. So today, I brought along my extra brain. We'll just call this brainy. It's the size of an adult human brain. This one's looking at me. How you doing, brainy? Oh, it's a terrible time. Oh, well, I know it's a hard time. We're all going through this. Thanks, Bill. Anyway, so we calm generally the right brain, but it's, it's the parts of the brain about relationships, about feeling safe by giving ear statements. But then we want to help the person think, think about choices. And so choices are a way to get people thinking and that helps calm people down as well. You can do this with children, you can do this with high conflict people, you can do this with people you're staying in a closed space with uh, for uh, a few weeks here. And it looks like we have a few weeks to go. This is really historical, what we're going through. So we're trying to help remember this and learn to help each other through it. So think in terms of choices. You can turn anything into a choice something about the past that you don't like, you can say how you want it to go in the future. Say you have a choice here. Say with a child, it's bedtime, and you can say, okay, it's bedtime, you have a choice. You can brush your teeth first and then put on your pajamas, or you can put on your pajamas first and then brush your teeth. Seems pretty simple, but giving them a choice helps them think, which helps them grow up, and also helps them feel that they're not powerless in the situation. Likewise, if you're working with a client, many of the people um, that we train, lawyers, therapists, mediators, judges, often know the right answer. And so you just tell people, this is what you should do. But it helps to turn it into a choice. By the way, I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a plane going overhead. But <laughs> I'm going to pause. That's my choice. <laughs> now I'm going to proceed. So if you say to someone, I have a suggestion, would you like to hear it? You're giving them a choice, and that helps them not feel powerless, and it helps them buy into hearing your suggestion. And so when you think in terms of choices like this, you're actually helping calm the person, helping them feel better about what they're doing and getting them to think because thinking involves the part of the brain that's different from the reacting part. So turn things into a choice, whether it's people around you, whether it's yourself, you could say you have a choice here. One of the tips is to write things down. I'm not sure, I, I'm bored mommy, what should I do? I'm bored dad, what should I do? to say, let's make a list of three things. Now close your eyes and pick one of them. So it can turn anything into a choice. Um, when you're discussing what uh, a client needs, have them write. Writing a list helps them calm down and get into their thinking brain. And we tend to think of that as the left brain where language is, et cetera. Now I might mention as I wrap up, we have, I have a half hour video 
on are you talking to the right brain? Because you have a choice how you communicate with others and that influences whether they come back upset and angry or whether they think about it. So when you talk to people in a calm voice and give them a choice, you're addressing more that problem solving brain. When you react at angry, etc., they're more likely to get act, react and be angry too. Anyway, so that's our tip for this week. Good luck, and next week I'll give you another tip. So you take care, get through the week. And I'll try to figure out how to turn this off.